Nessa temporada do Expresso Futuro, eu vim em África visitar um continente que está sendo totalmente transformado pela conectividade. Vim mostrar inovação tecnológica e economia do conhecimento. E aí você vai perguntar, mas em África? Sim, esse é um continente cheio de vitalidade, juventude, que tem descoberto soluções extraordinárias e que funcionam, inclusive, de lição para o Brasil. Tem muito projeto legal e interessante que olha para o futuro aqui. E é isso que a gente vai ver nessa temporada do Expresso Futuro. Geralmente, quando a gente pensa em África, no Brasil, a gente lembra dos safares, das paisagens, da natureza. Só que a verdade é que a África está se urbanizando cada vez mais. Aqui em Nairobi, como dá para ver, é uma cidade parecida com as grandes metrópoles do Brasil. São Paulo, Belo Horizonte, Curitiba e assim por diante. Outra coisa importante, quando a gente pensa em África, não é correto a gente pensar numa coisa só. Pelo contrário, África é um continente de grande diversidade, muitos povos, muitas culturas. Cada lugar é uma história, uma forma de viver, um costume completamente diferente. Então a gente precisa mudar a forma como a gente enxerga a África. A África hoje é um lugar de vitalidade, transformação e, por que não dizer, de urbanismo que avança cada vez mais. Every five seconds there is a startup being started in Nairobi. It's quite the vibrant scene when it comes to startups, especially in the tech space. Infelizmente há vários cenários, né, que as cidades africanas são muito pobres ou que as cidades africanas não têm o mesmo potencial que as cidades na Ásia têm ou na Europa. Mas acho que Maputo tem não só a parte turística, mas a parte de conhecimento, a parte de inovação. We have just another way to proceed, another way to talk. We, here we pay with mobile money, when in Europe we pay with card, credit card, etc. So we already advance in so many things. People don't have a bank account, but they have a bank account on their phone, you know, like so. It's really modern and sometimes it's really old school. I don't know. I feel like I'm back in the future all the time. I don't know. I think people don't don't imagine the skills and the talent here. They imagine just poor people, uh, you know, begging sometimes for money. But it's not true. Like we have multi-talented people, a music artist, a visual artist. You have like great school. There is a lot to improve, of course. It's just like what do we choose to highlight? Aqui na Nairobi chama a atenção os matatos. O que, que é isso? Esses ônibus que circulam pela cidade de transporte de passageiros. Só que, pessoal, olha isso. Tem que ser grafitado com música alta, televisão. Ou seja, quanto mais modificado, melhor. Os donos dos ônibus, inclusive, perceberam que competiam pra, por passageiros para ver quem é que fazia o ônibus mais legal. Quanto mais legal o ônibus, mais passageiro. Foi preciso o governo intervir para falar, pessoal, isso tem limite, vamos parar com isso. Só que aí sabe o que aconteceu? Os passageiros reclamaram e teve que voltar tudo do jeito que era. Quanto mais bacana o ônibus, mais passageiro. Aliás, vem comigo, vamos ver como é que é lá dentro. Pessoal, olha isso. TV de LED em tudo quanto é lugar grafite, cartazes, música alta, é como se fosse uma festa ambulante no caminho do seu trabalho. Inclusive, eu topei com a minha amiga Irene, que está aqui justamente andando no Matato. Hi Irene, how are you? Very good to see you, excellent. Irene, where are we now? We're in Nairobi, in an area called Ngong Road. This is our public transport, they come 
pimped up. People go to work like in a party, right? Exactly. They go to work in a party and they go to parties in a party. <laughs> we call it the moving discos. <laughs> yeah. Irene, when people are in the Matatus, do they find like a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend too sometimes? Oh, easily. <laughs> Imagine we're sitting right now and start having a conversation about a film maybe we're watching and then we start connecting. We just talk politics as well. Funny enough, the whole Matatu would be discussing about the same topic. It's almost like a public square on wheels. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. You sometimes don't even want to get to your next stop. So people just keep going, sometimes they miss their, their stop. Okay. Because you're engaged yeah. in the communication. I'm just looking at it, I'm like, I'm amazed. So they have a Wi-Fi link in this vehicle. Is it free to get the Wi-Fi here? It is free. The best thing is that Wi-Fi internet connection in Kenya is easily accessible anywhere. How long has it been like that, that people are connected in Nairobi? I think we've been good like this since 2013. Funny enough, the connection is not only great just like you would think, mm -hmm. like it's just in the urban areas. Yeah. The connection is amazing even in the countryside. It is a connected society and I love how young people are so innovative. Young people are coming up with ideas that you cannot think of. Like young people are thinking of why am I here and I can go this land like say two hours away, try wow. do some farming and manage the land while I'm in Nairobi. And this is not a, a story that you made up. This is your story, right? I'm actually <laughs> talking out of experience. <laughs> I am a filmmaker by profession. Yes. And at the same time, I go out and farm. I do poultry farming and I do onion or tomato farming. Wow. Yeah, on a large scale. I believe information changes people's lives because also the accessibility to information from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. it also triggers your thoughts to know where you were, either as an yeah. individual or as a country, like what are the people doing out there? Yeah. What are we doing right here? Yeah. The status of what can change you or change your mind, you get to learn it from the connectivity. Sounds of Africa. Africa. How do you think Nairobi will be in 10 years? I think Nairobi will be in smart living. The digital era right now mm -hmm. is so impressive. It's blowing my mind just imagining 10 years from now. Yeah. And there's a lot of young entrepreneurs, right? Opening startups and companies. Startups, I want to believe, open up every other single day. Every other wow. single minute, startups open up. Like I said, <laughs> the system doesn't provide. What I love about the young in Kenya, we just mm -hmm. don't sit and wait. We just don't sit and complain, or we just don't look for shortcuts. Yeah. It becomes so innovative. So there's a lot of opportunity there's coming. There's a lot of opportunities that people think uh, about. Like, I can believe that we could do this without the connectivity. We cannot do this without the technology, without having a phone, a smartphone. That's it. I can do this from my home because I have a phone and I have yeah. a connection. All I need to do is to think about what is in my environment and earn from it. <laughs> Pessoal, isso aqui é uma festa ambulante. Eu queria ir para o trabalho todo dia dentro de um matato desse. É outra vida. Do you think the matatos are a symbol of the connected society in Kenya? I believe they are. Mm -hmm. They are a symbol of the connection and the sense of community we have in Kenya. Digital technology and community, right? Connection of all those. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Uma das coisas que mais incomoda o pessoal aqui do Quênia é a forma como a mídia ocidental cobre o país. Aliás, esse é um problema geral. Quando a gente pensa em África, muitas vezes a mídia ocidental mostra muita coisa que são os desafios, a pobreza, mas raramente mostra isso daqui, que é a parte urbana, a parte que está se desenvolvendo e a parte que está dando certo. Isso incomoda também a Damares Agueio. Ela criou a revista Cassini exatamente porque estava insatisfeita com a forma como a mídia ocidental cobria o Quênia. A Cassini ela faz um apanhado de tudo que tem acontecido de interessante aqui. E curiosidade, a Damares ela trabalhou como atriz no filme O Jardineiro Fiel, que foi dirigido pelo nosso Fernando Meirelles. Vamos falar com ela. I grew up in, in Europe, in the Netherlands, and growing up, I was exposed to very negative stories about our home continent, that it's a place of despair, 
uh, hopelessness, conflict. And then I came back and I realized that that was just one side of the story that's being told. And who's telling the other side of the story? Very few people were, actually. So I thought um, it would be great to also focus on the positive things that are happening here. The stories are bare. There are so many positive stories. There are so many great stories of entrepreneurship, the innovation we talked about, and you know, even just the common, we call them mamamboga, the, 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 the woman on the street selling her stuff and just you know, feeding her children and taking them through university. These are amazing and really inspirational stories that people don't talk about, but they're there. You just need to step outside your door and find them and look for them. Essa aqui atrás é a favela de Kibera, uma das mais populosas da África. Fica aqui em Nairobi. E quando a gente pensa no continente africano, muitas vezes o que vem à cabeça são imagens como essa. No entanto, precisa olhar no detalhe, porque apesar daqui ser uma área pobre, se a gente olhar no horizonte, está cheio de poste de Wi-Fi, trazendo uma conectividade excelente, fazendo com que todo mundo aqui esteja conectado. Inclusive, a gente testou a conexão aqui e é melhor do que muitas das conexões que a gente tem no Brasil por celular. E lembrando, conectividade é pilar para o desenvolvimento. E nisso, o continente africano está avançando muito. Se você só conhece algo de onde você está, é difícil ter um pensamento diferente. Mas com a internet, você pode acessar... And luckily in Kenya, the internet penetration is great, you know. Pretty much everyone can access the internet and pretty much everyone has a smartphone. So that helps a lot in, in changing mindsets and having people have a broader outlook. It's so important to know who you are and where you come from. I can't overemphasize that. So even as we have our colonial past and our baggage and our history, the history I was taught about my country is from a colonial lens. We were taught to feel like we were worthless people who were then rescued by somebody. And it's simply not true. The other side of the story was never taken into account. It was never written. And if you dig, just dig a little deeper and you find these nuggets and you talk to elders in society, you find that it's a completely different story. And if you grew up believing that, that you were this worthless person, then you end up perpetuating the same narrative. Like, I'm not good enough, you know? But if you're empowered with your story and you know your culture and you are strong in that, then you show up strong in this world. Pessoal, tá vendo essa figueira que tá aqui atrás? Pois é, ela é uma figueira muito importante para os povos que moravam no vilarejo que ficava aqui nessa área. Hoje, aqui é o bairro de Westlands, um dos bairros mais novos de Nairobi, onde está cheio de prédio, inclusive de empresas de tecnologia, centros de pesquisa e uma área muito nova. E foi interessante, tentaram cortar essa árvore, só que não deixaram. Tiveram, inclusive, que construir tudo em volta dela, preservando, inclusive aquele viaduto lá, porque essa árvore é muito importante para as populações daqui. We are at what we call uh, Nairobi Westlands Market. Mm -hmm. And it's a market where different vendors come and sell their items. But more importantly on this floor, we have artisans or creators of what we call African cultural heritage items. And these are very special and maybe unique items, right? Yeah, actually majority of the items made here are handmade. Mm -hmm. And they're made by artisans who are very uh, traditional techniques that they have learned from their fathers, they've been passed on the line. And you have created something that goes beyond traditional Dish, right, which is Mau. So Mau Africa is a marketplace platform yeah. uh, and it connects Africa's heritage art, artisans and creatives with world markets. Mm -hmm. So what we realize is as much as these artisans and creatives have been making this art for a millennia, yeah. their art is not easily discoverable. 
So we made a platform, we made a platform where we can list their items and uh, people across the world can be able to discover and buy these items. What normally happens is, for example, an artist like this that is doing uh, a fashion items, they can go to the platform, create an account, they get a uh, storefront or call a website, and then we help them market and uh, connect them with either businesses or sometimes consumers like yourself that want to buy these items. This has been an idea that has been brewing over the years. I've always been a creative, I have been a rapper, a fashion designer, <laughs> a writer, but I've always wanted to be in the creative arts. So after a while I gave up and uh, joined FinTech and worked in FinTech for a while. So when COVID hit and some of the artisans used to buy from called us and they were like, oh, we can't sell in markets anymore. Yeah. You guys have customers you can sell to. Because my co-founder worked uh, at Jumia, which is one of the biggest uh, e-commerce marketplaces in Africa. Yes. She had the idea of how do we come up with a platform where actually now it will be easy for artisans to, to also sell their items since they can't go to the physical markets anymore. So what we also do is add the stories on the website. So yeah. also when you buy, you connect to the story. So you understand how it was used in African culture. Just to preserve those traditions and the fact that you're telling those stories gives more life to the vibrancy of the culture that we have here. I love to show you one of these very unique stalls. All right. And these are arts that have been collected all across Africa. So they, they have historical, how they were used. Wow. Then we have the uh, traditional ceremonial forms. Oh, wow. These were from Congo. All different tribes, but they wow. have different celebrations. So we have like those, we have, uh, we call them the marimba. Oh, you yeah. can call the farm piano. Sure. These are marimba from uh, Congo. You can actually play, oops. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. This comb, you see now, this is a different form. We have the comb, the comb from uh, the Dinka. This is a paint made of osso, da pessoal. Vem da tribo Dinka, que fica no Sudão do Sul. Incrível. In the if you go to the website, you ask, you, ask, you, you, you download Dinka tribes, the comb is. So some of these you can actually buy online now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, everything you can buy online, all this. Wow. What, all what is needed is we have the photos. These are called the, the hand -dressed. They use like pillow. Oh, so when, when they braided their hair, mm -hmm. they didn't want to sleep flat to destroy it, so they sleep on this like that. So they call the necklace or the pillow. So it's incredible, pessoal, because o pessoal que está com o cabelo arrumado, ou não quer desarrumar o cabelo, pode deitar em cima disso aqui e não vai desarrumar. Esse aqui é Maasai, aqui próximo do Quênia, e esse aqui é para armazenar leite. Inclusive eu cheirei aqui, ó, e tem cheiro de leite. Is this made from a tree? It's a fruit. It's a fruit. How did you do the development of the software, the web page? Was it easy to do it from here? My co-founder has a large IT background. She is very good at coding and creating platforms. So she was able to do that. But more importantly, Kenya is one of the, as the Silicon Savannah of Africa. So internet is very easily accessible. Uh, guys are educated enough to learn how to use digital plan, uh, platforms. Payment platforms like M-Pesa have disrupted the whole payments industry. So working in this uh, tech hub, which is Nairobi, it's, it's quite easy. There's a lot of support even from the states to establish a tech business. Oh, we, we envy you so much for yeah. that. Like, <laughs> I see Brazil, we, we can do better. Tell me about being an entrepreneur and a woman here. Uh, how, how does it work? It's actually quite interesting because right now there are a lot of opportunities for female founders. There are funds that are being put aside. You're finding there are mentors that are willing to put in their time to mentor female founders. So there are a lot of female uh, entrepreneurs that are doing amazing work in Kenya, but not only in Kenya, all across the continent we are seeing female founders actually coming up and coming up with very amazing businesses. Yeah. That's so good. This is from West Africa, right? Yes, from West Africa. If I wear it, people won't be upset with me, no, like, no, no. people will like that I wear people it, right? People will like it, actually. Okay. They'll yeah. admire your creativity because this is just a shirt and you have done the patchwork. That's amazing. Yes. So nice, so nice. So, Emia, Emia, Voleva, I'm going to take this. <laughs> Ah! 
No Quênia ou aqui na Tanzânia, a internet está chegando em todos os lugares, até mesmo em áreas rurais como essa, que são habitadas pelo povo Maasai. Tem projeto até de levar conectividade para o Monte Kilimanjaro. Here we are now is on the crater floor of Empakai. In the in the time to come, the yes. government is planning mm -hmm. to do all the developments to make sure that uh, the network communication will also be available here in the crater. They told me that they're even planning to do it at Kilimanjaro, right? Yes, they did it. They oh, did really? It already? Yes. Yeah. So when you go uh -huh. to Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. you will get internet and, and you will be able to stream live from there. Uh, mm -hmm. on top of the mountain. Very good. Yes. And do you think it has changed people's lives in Tanzania for better? Yes, actually it has changed a lot of people's life because uh, mm -hmm. people can uh, communicate easily yes. as well as uh, they can help their families like, uh, you know, transferring money through uh, mobile applica applications. Mm -hmm. So people feel free wherever they are to send the money, to receive the money from everywhere, from their families, from their friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. O problema aqui não é mais conexão, é carregar o celular. Aqui não tem energia elétrica. Mas isso também está resolvido. Sabe como? Com painéis solares que estão sendo colocados até mesmo em cima de casas de pau a pique. Chinoi, you are Maasai, right? Yeah, I'm a Maasai. Can you explain what is Maasai for the Brazilian people? So Maasai is the one of the tribe found in Tanzania. So here in Gorongoro, this is the what this is the place where, where you can find the Maasai tribe. So the Maasai use cell phones now? Yes, yeah, so I use cell phone. And right? did the cell phone change the way of life? No. Yes, a little bit change, but it's not that like much. It's uh -huh. changing for the people who go to the school. Yeah. Because the people who go to the school and the people who are having a job, yeah. they, they're able to buy the smartphone. Yes. So if you have the smartphone, you can use it like social media, like Instagram, WhatsApp. Yes. So nowadays you can find the young people in the Maasai who are having smartphone. Right. Yeah. But it's possible to live the way the Maasai live and have a cell phone. It's okay, right? Yes, it's, <laughs> it's okay, but the problem is it charge. Uh -huh. Because, you know, sometimes the phone is running on charge, so you need yeah. to charge it. And yes. also you need to pay for charging the phone. Oh. Yeah, because people they don't have the they don't have the, they, there is no electricity here. Uh -huh. So the people some people they have like solar panel. Yes. So the people who have the solar panel they're the one who charging phones. And then you pay them for it to yeah, charge. You pay, yeah, you pay for them. So you don't have electricity in Masai area. You don't area. have the electricity in the Masai yes. area. How many languages do you speak? I speak three languages, I'm speaking Maasai. Uh -huh. Maasai is my tribe, so yes. that's why I'm speaking Maasai, uh -huh. Swahili and English. Can you say hi to the people in Brazil in Maasai? Like, uh, hello, hi, Brazil. Thank you so much. Congratulations for the beautiful work. Very nice. Karibusan. Karibusan. Everything comes from a story. The stories we're told, the stories we share, the stories we believe, the stories we challenge. Even if um, you want to change something, it's from a story. So for me, I feel like we're bringing to the fore new narratives, but also challenging old narratives and getting people to talk about things that maybe they would not normally talk about. And if we can continue with this journey for the next 10 years, we've already had some impact, I believe, but if we can continue for another 10 years, I believe that we might have a little bit of a change, you know, in the way we are viewed, even as Africans, by the outside world, but also the way we view ourselves. Because if I see myself in a story, let's say I even watch a movie and I see myself, I look at it and I see it's possible. I can do this. I think the continent as a whole is changing. The West always looks like we're 20 years back. They would be surprised if they came <laughs> here that we actually do better in most of these things, like the yeah. connection. I can tell you this from experience because of what I do. I connect with a lot of people and we are so advanced. And I believe Africa is doing great. I've had many opportunities to leave Africa and work outside of Africa. But for me, this is home. And this is where I want to use my skills and my talents and everything that I have.
pessoal, igual esse balão que a gente está aqui agora, a África está voando. 